Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Dice and Dragons. It is by Golden Egg Games. Plays about one to five players, ages eight up, and about 20 minutes to play through one single round. So we can play multiple rounds as well as a campaign in the game. In the game, you're going to be playing as uh, different heroes. So you can play as like a uh, wizard, or you can play as like a rogue. There's mages and all kinds of stuff. You pick one of those guys up, you set up your stats and all that kind of stuff, and then you prepare to roll dice. So you're going to be rolling dice, trying to get certain uh, combinations of the of the characters. It tells you down here what the abilities are and the combinations you need for the specific dice. And you're going to get three rounds. Every round you're going to lose an ability, and after the third ability has been lost, you're going to refresh, and then the dragons are going to come out and fight. These are the dragons right here. And uh, it's basically what's going to happen is they're going to have a certain amount of health, they're going to have their ability, as well as their three different attacks, and they're also going to roll Yahtzee, so they'll roll three times, and if they can get three da dragons, they'll do a bunch of damage. They have golden experience, and after you defeat them, you're going to basically be able to uh, gain gold ex uh, and experience amongst all the party members. You can play multiple players, and if you do, you can play up to uh, multiple dragons, so you can play with uh, two dragons if you'd like. And uh, then you're going to continue throughout the campaign. You're going to fight the first dragon, second, third, fourth, all the way up to the sixth dragon. I went ahead and laminated all the cards so I can play over and over again, replayability along with these little uh, dry erase markers. Anyway, let me go ahead and show you what the contents come with, and, and then we'll talk about how to play the game. So here we have Dice and Dragons by Golden Egg Games and everything that it comes with. You're going to be getting a stack of dragons and a stack of the different characters to choose from. There's going to be the wizard and the warrior. Uh, there's a one you can actually write your own in. Uh, you've got the ra ranger, you've got a cleric, and of course the rogue. I went ahead, like I said, laminated these guys so that I can use a dry erase marker, which doesn't come included, neither does the laminated aspect. But then you can go ahead and write down whatever you want and of course uh, wipe it off and then uh, play again. You don't have to worry about it so much. Much. But uh, it has enough content where you can play multiple, multiple times without a problem. It comes with all this stuff here. There's going to be all these dragons as well. And the first dragon, second, and third, and fourth, all the way down to the last guy, which is going to be the black dragon. You're also going to get five dice here. And these die are basically going to signify the different uh, symbols related to each character class. And you're going to be rolling Yahtzee. You're going to be rolling the dice and trying to match the symbols allocated here. If you roll a dragon, that means the dragon can do a counterattack. And based on the dragon, as you can see here, uh, however many dragons are going to be left is how much damage they deal to you. So you always want to make sure to try and re-roll these dice here. This guy, obviously, he wants these little, um, well, I guess, like, like wizard symbols here. So we keep this one here. Maybe we roll, we'll keep this one here and we roll these ones here. Oh, the dragon, we don't want that. And so we'd once again try and re-roll. Alright, what do we got here? And you try and look at the board here, see if anything matches. You do have a match here. You got this one here, this one here, and this one here. And then you would actually do damage. You actually place, uh, based on your color, you'd place one of these guys on there. It signifies that you've used that. You would do damage to the specific dragon, marking its health down and putting it down to whatever it is currently at. Well, that's terrible writing there. <laughs> Let's see if I can do that better. Huh. I can't write backwards very well. And then you would continue like that, and players would be doing that. So the way it works is simple. I actually went ahead, and we've already played the game many times, um, through a, almost the entire campaign. But you're going to take one of these, you're going to write your name down, like Stabber over here, and how, much, how much original armor he has, his hit points, along with any items he gets after defeating dragons, his level, experience, gold, starting int, and then, of course, his abilities here. You're going to go ahead and fill all that stuff in to begin the game. Uh, so basically, every single player is actually going to go ahead and get one of these little things here. So if you're playing with one player, which you could do just fine, you just pick a, pick a character. Let's pick one that's already like uh, not a blank one. I love this one right here, the wizard, because we're already using him. Move away all the rest of the stuff. We choose a dragon to fight with. And then, of course, the wizard's going to get three of these guys here. We'd move all the rest of this stuff off. Every single player would also get these here. They basically just block off abilities here. Uh, these are going to be tokens here. They're going to come with the game. The dragon tokens, the netting tokens. You got flame, and then uh, I think this is like a clamp of some sort. Some of them are reduce the amount of defense dragons have and put, pinning them in place, all that good stuff. And these uh, pencils also come as well. They actually have dice and dragons written on them. I'm not going to use that, though. I'm just going to go ahead and use my dry erase, uh, the box, and both rule books, the player guide and the dragon guide. We don't need any of that, though. So what's going to happen here at first is taking all these guys off here, and you're going to roll your dice. After you're done rolling your dice three times, selecting whatever ones you want to save. Maybe you have certain ones you like. For instance, if I rolled this, 
And if I roll this, and I have these guys, like if it was my last roll, I'd roll this. Okay, my last roll, bam, I get those. This is gonna be a counterattack, and this is not usually something I can use. So I choose where I wanna place this, bam, maybe right here, the fireball, do six damage to the dragon, marking him down to, uh, let's see, 39 points of health. And then afterwards, all the die I used cannot be given, but if I was playing with more than one player, I could take this die here and give it to the next player, provided they wanted it, which basically is a locked die for them, and they would use these to roll. After I did that too, the dragon's going to counterattack me and it would do five damage to me with its claws. And based on its my, my hit points, if I, let's say I had 10, I would actually go down to five health points. And you gotta be careful, you don't wanna die because dying is not very good in this game. Uh, after that, they would actually get their locked die, they would take the rest of the die and they would roll. But don't forget, whenever you use an ability, you're gonna go ahead and mark it down just like this, signifying that it's been locked. So only the rest of the abilities here can be used. Don't forget to make yourself a, uh, a name, like I was talking about before, we'll call him, uh, Pumi, right? Why not? Okay. <laughs> as well as your level, your experience, and your gold. There we go, just like that. And we don't have any items to start the game with. But they would roll, and they would start doing damage to the dragon as well. Sometimes the dragon's gonna have abilities down here that are gonna do different things. The first dragon won't. It just has eight experience, three gold, and 45 health, along with all this. And then it's gonna come down to the next, your turn again. When it's your turn again, you're gonna try and get another ability. Let's say you got, I don't know, strike, you would do an extra five damage to the dragon. And finally, your last one, maybe you did lightning storm. After everybody's done their third move, you're gonna take all of these off, refresh all that, and the dragon's gonna get to go, and he gets to play Yahtzee himself. He's gonna be rolling the die. Ooh, two dragons here. And he would actually go ahead and roll two more times, securing all the dragons he can, up to three, of course, for this specific dragon. Four dragons, that's that's really bad. And he would do 10 damage to all the people fa facing it. Now, if you played with multiple players at a certain point, I think it's like uh, th three and up, or no, 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 it's, it's, it's four plus. Then you're actually gonna take two dragons. You're gonna put them both into play, and you're gonna set people into teams. One team's gonna fight one dragon, one team's gonna fight the other dragon. And after one of the dragons have been defeated, then you can actually, uh, the other players can actually help the other players by doing certain things, like maybe they have a shield they want to give to people plus two AC, or they're going to put tokens on, or heals, all that kind of stuff. They can do that, but they can't fight the dragon themselves. It has to be the other team, and if you die, you're going to be out until the next phase of the next dragon fight. If you kill all the dragons, you're going to actually move on to the next set of dragons, and you're going to go ahead and fight them, or set of dragons, depend or, or, or single dragon, depending on how many players you have in the game. Make sure you set these tokens aside to be used. Each, each different player is going to have different abilities, and also, as you continue through the game, when you're fighting, you have this player guide and this dragon guide, right? So the player guide tells you how to play the game. It's pretty simple as far as that goes, um, and all the different skills and whatnot, and this, of course the four and five player rules, like I was saying, with multiple dragons. But with the dragons, it tells you what the shops are going to entail. So if you beat the first dragon, it shows you the items in the shop. It shows you the market, uh, what the marketplace does exactly, and then you can go ahead and purchase things for one gold, the quantity of what's in the shop. If you fight both dragons, you get to choose from both of them as and as well as the shared gold pool and they do different things this one says add a, man, a magic symbol and it's going to be an instant potion that you can use one time steel shield plus one ac um, so all that kind of stuff you can go ahead and continually go throughout the campaign but the idea is pretty simple rolling the dice uh, using your abilities that you can, locking them when, you, when you've used them. If you ever roll a dragon, you get a counterattack. After all three, all the players have used three of these guys here, the dragon's going to do his attack at you guys and continuously go on like that. The last thing I should talk about is, like I did say before, there are abilities the dragons have, like this blue dragon here. He has hardened, so he has one extra armor, and he has frost. On each sustained counter hit, uh, on each sustained counter hit damage, take one of the hero's class tokens and place it on the dragon sheet. Release one class token by using any uh, any healing or blessing effects on the uh, frosted hero. So that means you have to actually place this on here, stopping the player from being able to use another ability. Other dragons will lock dice, so on and so forth, and they get extremely more difficult as you progress. I suppose if you wanted to, you could also change, sw start with a more difficult dragon to make the game even more intense for you. But that's the basic idea of dice and dragons. Let's come up and talk about it. So a couple caveats first before we get into the review. First of all, when you're rolling dice, of course, after you're done rolling, whatever die you have left over, if you want, you can give one die to your opponent that is, um, or your, your ally that is gonna be next to you in player turn order. So let's say that they actually want the symbol here. Well, then you could pass that to them, just one of them, and they can choose to keep it, uh, basically locking it in, or they can choose to uh, re-roll it if they like. It would be the same aspect for all players. You're gonna be able to re-roll re the dice until they're all locked up to the third roll, and then use the abilities you can if you don't have any abilities to use, you have to just pick a random ability on your board to lock in. So just like you would in, in Yahtzee, you have to roll 
and if you fail the roll, you have to lose an ability or you lose a scoring point. But having the, abil having the ability to help other players is very useful by keeping one of those dice specifically set for another player. You can choose to do that. And like I said, the dragons get more and more difficult. There's especially uh, there's also different abilities you can get as you progress throughout the game. The experience is going to give you new abilities. It's going to give you more armor and more HP as well. All that kind of stuff as you continue through the game. It has a D&D slash style function along with the games like uh, King of Tokyo and I think you know, the kind of die rolling style games uh, with Yahtzee aspects in the mechanics. So what do I think about this game? We played uh, solo player, which is fine. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. But I think the game shines when you're playing with more players. Four or five players is actually where I enjoy the game. I think most people might enjoy three. But for some reason, the ability to help your opponents after you defeated the dragons kind of cool. They're basically over there on the landscape and you're tossing heals and shields and all that kind of stuff. I like that aspect of it. Um, it also progresses the game a little quicker so you can go through an entire campaign almost in a single night, which is is kind of nice as well, as opposed to sitting it down and packing it up and playing it again later. Um, and of course, the dragons do get more and more formidable and different abilities and whatnot. Uh, they get more, more, more and more stronger, much, much more stronger. <laughs> and uh, the different abilities are kind of funny. They, they have some poison things. You have to start healing opponents to protect them from getting poisoned. Uh, there's about, I think, eight dragons, and there's also five different characters. However, you can customize your own character if you'd like, which is kind of cool. And uh, fighting against those two dragons at once is interesting because you're not necessarily doing that, but you are at the same time because you're trying to help the people um, in in the secondary party who are doing that. Um, the the way that locks the way that it locks is, is fine. The mechanic that kind of so you can't keep using the easy abilities over and over again. You have to actually try to try and get the better combo locks. And if you can't, you fail. The little tokens are nice. You can net things and whatnot. Uh, poisoning is 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 irritating, and uh, that kind of is the point, right? And of course, the dragon, uh, he can very, very, very scary on his rolls, or you can get lucky, he can whiff completely. It's not very likely to he'll whiff, but it, when it does happen, it's it's wonderful. Dying in this game is no good because you don't want to die if you're out. You have to wait till the next phase before you can actually come back in and start playing again. You would still share the uh, levels up and all that kind of stuff, though. That's nice. So, what do I think? The game is fun. I enjoyed the game. Everybody who was playing at the table when we were playing a five player game really had a lot of fun as well. They liked the aspects where you can go back and forth with each other. Does it feel like a King of Tokyo game? Is it different enough to where you'd want to pick up uh, this game as opposed to any of the other games? Well, it's yes and no, right? So if you want a game that's far more cooperative and you want to fight against the uh, the dragons or the monsters themselves, basically you're playing as the populace against Godzilla, then this is game is going to be very, very different. But as far as mechanically it goes, it is very similar. In fact, you're going to be rolling the dice, you're going to be locking in abilities, and you're going to be attacking and healing and whatnot. Um, so it's going to be up to you. Personally, this is different enough to, for me where I would suggest you guys can check it out and uh, see if you want to pick it up. I would definitely have one of these in my collection, and I also have one like Elements or like King of Tokyo, and of those die rolls as well. I think they kind of share their own shell space but are different enough to where you could actually be like oh do you want to play cooperative this style game or do you want to play competitive this style game overall though it's a fun game i think you guys would enjoy it i definitely think you should check it out it'll be on kickstarter in the description below uh dice and dragons by golden egg games make sure to laminate it it's very important otherwise you're going to run out of stuff and nobody wants that <laughs>